Speaking to families and individuals whose lives are touched by Sturge Weber syndrome, I am so pleased to be able to share with you the news that here at the Kennedy Krieger Institute, we've discovered the genetic cause of Sturge Weber syndrome. I'd like to tell you more about this discovery. Sturge Weber syndrome is caused by a somatic mutation in a gene called GNAQ. A somatic mutation is a change in a gene that is only in a localized area of the body. We think that this change in the gene occurs in the first trimester of fetal development. I'd like to tell you more about this gene. GNAQ is an important gene in certain cell pathways, and we already know a lot about this gene and how it affects pathways in a cell. We know that the genetic change that causes Sturge Weber syndrome is an activating mutation. And so, because we already know a lot about this gene, it gives us hope that we might, in the future, be able to figure out how to treat or even cure Sturge Weber syndrome. This really important discovery has been made possible through a collaboration between my lab and the lab of Dr. Jonathan Pesner here at the Kennedy Krieger Institute, but also a collaboration with Dr. Douglas Marchuk at Duke University. It's also been made possible through funding from the NIH, the Brain Vascular Malformation Consortium, the Hunter's Dream for Cure Foundation, and also philanthropic funding from several families who've raised money or donated from across the country. I want to thank all of them from their support. It, this discovery would not have been possible without their help. In addition, the Sturge Weber Foundation has been key to this discovery through their advocacy and their help in recruitment and, and tissue donation. I'd also like to thank them for their very important role. Tissue donation is so important to this research. Our discovery wouldn't have been possible without the skin tissue and brain tissue that we worked on to discover the genetic cause of Sturge Weber syndrome. And tissue donation will be really important to future research. While we know the genetic mutation, we don't know in what cell types this genetic mutation occurs. So we continue to work on this really important question and we continue to need tissue donation to answer that question. I think there are really important answers that this discovery can give to families and affected individuals. For example, because we now know that Sturge Weber syndrome is caused by a genetic change in the GNEQ gene, we can tell families, tell you, that Sturge Weber syndrome is not caused by an injury during pregnancy. There's nothing that a mother or a family did or didn't do that caused the Sturge Weber syndrome in their child. It's caused by a somatic mutation, and somatic mutations occur at random throughout the lifetime of an individual. And we, while we don't know exactly why this happens in some individuals and not in others, families, parents can rest assured that this is not a condition that's going to be inherited. It's not going to be passed along to other children, and in an affected individual, they're not going to pass it on to their children. That's because it's a somatic mutation. It's not something that's going to run in families. And finally, I think it's really important for uh, everyone to know that because we know so much about this gene, and we know that it's an activating mutation, and we know a lot about the pathways that it activates, we have real hope that in the next five to ten years, perhaps sooner, perhaps a little longer, that there will be drugs and new treatments developed to inhibit that overactivation of those pathways that will be new treatments and perhaps even a cure for Sturge Weber syndrome. So this discovery turns a page and sets us firmly on a new pathway for new treatments for Sturge Weber syndrome. And this is very exciting and we look forward to telling you about new discoveries into the future. Thank you.